Hello, everybody, and um, welcome excuse me, back. Scott. Yeah. We are, can we finish our game? Okay, uh, don't go fish. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I don't remember right. they go fish, but I thought. Right. Dunce got any sixes? Your fucking toe, Mike. Uh, got any sixes, Dunce? No, go fish. You know, we'll, we'll put this on hold. Okay, go ahead, Deborah. Thanks, guys. I mean, <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, we, um, uh, you guys make your way over to Craig. Uh, actually, before I even go on with that, I'm going to make one quick little statement. We're actually going to run a little long this stream. We're actually going to run uh, because we're not playing <gasps> the next campaign next hour. You didn't uh, tell me that. So we're yeah, all... On. We're gonna run a little long. We're gonna run a little long. So the next break might the be a little fuck, bit man. might be a little bit longer. This, so people this can deal just keeps it. getting worse all the time. You know, we're gonna run a little long, and that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna be an extra hour. So go fuck yourself. Uh, I wish I had well, some. Are we getting overtime at least? I thought four hours of Scott was bad. Here's fucking five hours. Uh, Rick, you want fourteen hours of me? Uh, oh, daddy. <laughs> so, so, so. Anyways, let's. Uh, you guys um, are are uh, making your way into Crag. Now there's a bit of a, a, a you know tentative nature to to your approach because obviously you're a little bit scared of what it is that you might come across, uh, but also kind of you know um, your characters are all people that like combat and and uh, like having well you know what I mean you like having the the difficulties that you choose to put yourselves in all the time because it gives you fame or riches or wenches or whatever it might be right so so you you uh, as you're approaching Craig. Um, you know, that last little leg up uh, in that mountain pass to, to get there. You know, you have like that mixed swirl of emotions. But I do have to ask, as you are feeling better this morning, is this like a walk up or is this like a like like trot and like the horses as fast as possible to get up there? You think we're trying to hurry to the witch hunters? Okay. Like so it's like, a, it's like a slow walk up there uh, as you as you make your way. Now, when you get actually get into the city itself... Um, uh, you see like the gates that we had seen beforehand, um, uh, that were there. Once again, the, the defenses of the city are far greater than what you would expect for how small the city is. Like the population isn't, uh, extremely great. It's just very dense. You know what I mean? So estimated yeah, they're 3, very 000. dense, all right. Yeah. It's about 3000. What's up? Fucking witch hunters. What's up? I thought somebody said something. So you guys go approaching and you walk into the city. There are guards that are at the, uh, the, the city gates. There are guards mm. still standing there, and so when you're approaching, um, you look up to see that there's a guard, and so um, the guard looks down to you guys. They don't know who you are. You know what I mean? Because it's not like you stood out extremely last time you were here. Um, you know, killing this huge big beast and uh, slaying the basilisk problem and all that. No, no. And two witches. Yeah. No no one stands out. <laughs> no, well, the guards, you know, uh, uh, a little high he's up. The magic know, like, boy that calls it all. So when you guys come walking up, the guard doesn't seem to notice any of you, but like, kind of like gives you gives you a look as you're approaching, and then he turns back and he says, "Done," and then um uh like lets you guys pass like from his like little ranger tower or whatever it was uh, as you go walking in. When you walk into the town, you see that on the other side, what he had called down to is there happens to be uh, two witch hunters that are off to the side sitting there and they're actually playing um uh, Gwent. Um, they look, one of them looks up at you, one of them has their back to you, one of them looks up to you as you guys are, are walking in, just kind of like notes you, doesn't say anything, um, until it is that they actually see, who was it, Tal, that finally slayed the beast, until they see Tal, and he actually gives like a nod to Tal, and, um, and you guys keep walking in. Uh, when you get in there, the first location that you're shooting towards, is it going to be, uh... I actually want to talk to those two witch hunters real quick as we walk by. Sure. So you kind of like fun. pull off and you head over that way. I'm going to fuck yeah. off to a tavern. <laughs> so you yeah, go to the uh, closest tavern nearby. Yep. What were the two pla I know we gave one egg to the noble guy. Mm -hmm. Give two what eggs. What was the other one? So the two words to the noble guy. I Because originally oh. I think you were thinking about giving the egg to the uh, to the people that have the shop, but because they ended up being dead, you just gave that one to the noble guy too, and that's where my confusion was before. No, 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 no. Um, that one we, kept. we had two eggs. Tal fucked off to the dwarves to give mm -hmm. them one. Which is why you And that's them. the egg that ended up in the Scoyatel camp. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we bullshitted the noble into believing that those two eggs were the only eggs. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you guys make your way. Uh, oh, so, so you go to the tavern, Bastion and Tal, with him or with him? Uh, I would actually I... whisper over to Bastion's, like, we might want to check the notice board to see if there's a contract. 
Yeah, and when he did that, I'd go with him. So. I'd stay with Lenard. Good, because they're the other one that they nodded at, and so actually you're going to uh, increase. I was like, why is my door opening? My dog's walking in. Uh, <laughs> so you're the one that's going to make things a little bit like easier, because as you guys approach, and the other two are going to the tavern, as you guys approach, um, uh, the first witch hunter will actually you know kind of stand up and he gives like a <laughs> like as you like a friend that he hasn't seen in a long while or whatever and he comes over and he gives you like one of those hardy like hand clasps over to tal like you know yeah you're like oh man i'll never forget that moment that was it was glorious it was it was glorious that's literally his opening to you and when the other one like looks up like what the fuck he looks up and sees what's going on there. You actually see he um, he stands up like uh, like laughing as well and goes to give you like a, a pat on the back. Um, quick uh, perception check, please, um, Tal. <laughs> Only Leonard notices that before he stands up and gives that class from the back, he reaches across the table and plucks two cards off the uh, top of the other guy's deck. And uh, <laughs> and places them on the top of his deck, um, and uh, then he stands up and gives the clasp. And so, um, uh, what was it? I said, I guess he liked those cards. They're in the the, the the top of the deck, so you, you don't you don't know you don't know because you can't usually see what's. So he yeah. um he so he's uh, he stands up, gives the clasp, and they're kind of like, um, looking good, friend, looking good out there, killing more beasts. Uh, yeah, actually, um. We thought we'd come back and uh, just see Stefan and uh, just check in, see on uh, some other projects we're considering. And he like, he like looks, looks at Leonard buying a house in town. Uh, uh, so um... <laughs> they, they look at the two of you as well, like taken aback. But, you know, uh, uh, one of them just, like, looks a little confused at first, and the other one nods, and he's like, yeah, good for you guys. My cousin went that way, oh. too. He's a, he's, a ha he's a happy lad. Uh-huh. Uh, so, hey, have you, uh, have you, are the eggs hatched yet? Huh? We can come and... back in a few days. Uh, they look to each other, they're genuinely confused. Okay. Hey, uh, Tal, I don't think those eggs back so we should, uh, maybe we... Uh, Maybe we should. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Had a big hit on the head from that that fun stress. Maybe we should not talk to them about the eggs. Maybe we should um, talk to them about Stefan, and then go to Lord Taviston about the eggs. I mean, it would be good to know if you know they've. Well, I mean, I mean, look at the place. They're probably not. I feel like they'd be gloating if they killed some stone eye monster. You never know with these kinds of people. He like turns and smiles at them as they're talking, <laughs> and then returns back. To... I don't want no. blue drapes. <laughs> um, Why not? Blue is the color of royalty. It's hey, purple. Boys, boys, boys. Hey, this is the first one that stood up. I'm about to win this match, so I'm happy to see you, and I'm hoping that Stefan is right and that you will be joining us. But, uh, you know, this is against tell. Then you will be joining us. But until uh, until we hear good news, I gotta get back to whooping his ass. And the other guy kind of like shakes his head. He's like, oh, you know. And so, um, uh, you know, he goes to sit down. Speaking of Stefan, whereabouts is him? You know that building where you guys had that long meeting after the fight, when they get the the, the wall kind of blasted open. Hmm. Oh, he's kind of taking up that as camp. It's near the uh, the center of town. That gives him a good. You know, defensible place. He's been taking that up, and that's where we've all been, you know, spending our nights and the like. All right. Cheers, mate. Uh, good luck. Um, likewise. Sits down, and like as you guys like walking off, you hear the one that was, you know, friendly and whatnot, the one that stood up first. All of a sudden, he's cussing like, "What the? Where's my girl? Like, uh, clearly, the the game is now not going in his favor. Um, as uh, you know, they finish playing their game. So, um, uh, the two of you guys... That would have been really awkward if they're playing like... He's playing like Nilfgaard, the other guy's playing Redania, and he <laughs> takes two cards off the top of his deck and pulls out some Redania cards, and he's like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awkward. So, um, the, uh, the guy that, um... Uh, so you guys, do you go straight to Stefan, or do you try to make meet up with the other two at the tavern? 
I guess we'll go to Stefan. Okay, so the two of you in the tavern, you go to look, you walk in, look about, look at the message board. A couple of people recognize you guys either positively or negatively for the um, uh, what had transpired last time you were here. Uh, one person, when they see Bran, they actually like shy away, and you can actually actively hear them saying, he's the one that had me stuck in that world, in that other place. Uh, reminder, you didn't actually transport them to a different realm. You actually like altered the space and time and like the area that you were in. So they kind of seem freaked out and they're like backing off. You go to check out the message board. He's a freak. And there is no mess, there are no new messages about anything like that. However, uh, roll me an investigation check, the two of you. Like two investigation checks? Each of you them gets to roll an investigation. Oh, well. That's this delicious cake recipe. <laughs> Bastion, you happen to notice um, that there is uh, apparently uh, a sighting of Neckers that happens to be not far uh, to the uh, the northwest of here. And so there's a, a bet, there was, it's like, you know, a week or so old, a small contract put out for, for uh, Neckers. It's one of those, like, if you can, you know, Wait, find you and... Hmm? Die to the guys again. What was that? <laughs> nothing. nothing, nothing. Okay. So if you were able to, like, discover exactly where they are and, like, any details about them, kind of like a scouting job, it was one amount to pay. But if you were able to show proof of destroying their nest, they would, um, there'd be a different uh, degree of pay going towards it. So... Um, you know, you happen to see that one contract, but other than that, nothing really jumps out at you. I pointed it out to Bran, but I don't really, you know, harp on it. Something to keep in mind. I, I hold out, like, the keys, like, we could check out our new digs. We could. What is, what Honestly, exactly? it's going to be close to where uh, Lord Tavison lived, so we can get a closer look to see if Hell's broken loose yet. It's a good call. So I guess we're just going to head that way. Okay, so you guys uh, head out of the tavern and start heading over towards that place. Going back to the other two, uh, the two of you guys, you know, have a way of making your way oh through God. the uh, Let the party. We prefer to be referred to as the A team. Okay, yeah, we're the boys. You guys they are... can be they can be the B team. No 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 no. You guys are A team, they're team number one. So Wait. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, they're the first team. So So A team, uh you guys uh, you know made your way. It's a very light conversation, I imagine. Uh as you because you know, you guys are with each other all the time, maybe in silence. As you make your way to that center area, when you get there, you notice that the number of witch hunters obviously had dropped down considerably um, from the original group that had come to the city before when the um, uh, when that creature had attacked, the creature that came from the other realm. But looking about the city and kind of like taking in the sights, the people are here, they're living their lives, so on and so forth. But here and there, you see Nilfgaardian armor here and there sorry uh Redanian armor here and there you see witch hunters you see occasionally one will be posted up on like a, a a rooftop occasionally like there's two like off to the side like you know breaking a loaf of bread and having a conversation like while you know just eating a snack uh but once you get to the center area the area that was like kind of like a big opening spot where you fought the beast um uh one of the first things that you notice in that area is the beast itself is is there when it was slayed, it didn't exactly return to its realm, did it? Its body was left behind, and its body was massive. And so, while you guys had your fun plucking it, um, they also have had time to do things with it as well. And so, they actually ended up skinning the thing uh, completely, and taking its bones and whatnot, and actually taking its skull. And with like a, a, a huge, you know... It's made to look like a pike, but realistically, it's like a, a log of wood that's been like sharpened. They actually have the skull set on top of it in the center of the city, kind of like marking uh, to all around, you know, witch hunters. This is what they do. You know, it's clearly a sign to everybody else. This is what <laughs> happens when witch hunters are involved and when, you know, they like how it is. They, they take credit this. for other people's kills. Got it. Um, uh, over in the area where like parts of wall had been blasted open and whatnot. They actually, once again, just like really decorating this building in a way that looks kind of ridiculous. They took like bits of rib. They put bits of rib like uh, to kind of like, you know, fill in to, to, to uh, set as uh, what you would use as, um, what are they called? Studs in a wall. And then use those bits of rib, which are really wide, to kind of like build around it and close up all those gaps with the stone or whatever that they're using to do so. So they actually repaired the, the building, but they make it look like this ridiculous amalgamation of 
this dead beast and um, and uh, the kind of like stonework that they used beforehand. One of the things that immediately jumps out at you as well is that the quality of stonework is far lower because obviously there's not really any dwarves around, are there? Um, but you also notice that there are a good number of witch hunters in this area. As a matter of fact, if you had to guess, there are more witch hunters here now in this courtyard, just kind of like uh, whether it be training or exercising or conversing or whatever it is that they're doing, just in this like big open area, than what had originally uh, come here into the whole city beforehand. And when you uh, make your way through it, people don't really stop you because either one person kind of like speaks up for you or so on and so forth. If you're going to speak to um, Stefan, um, they let you through no problem. When you go into the building, you can actually see there's even more inside. Um, you don't know how many witch hunters there might be, but <clears throat> it definitely seems like this is more than just a small task force. It seems like this is almost hey. like this is almost like a moving army. Yeah, so we didn't see any of the Nilfgaardian garrison. So the Nilfgaardian uh, garrison, uh, did you did you specifically walk by there or towards it or? If it was on the way, but no. But I would have expected to at least see a Nilfgaardian soldier, or if not, the Nilfgaardian soldiers hanging by nooses outside the witch hunter's camp. Neither of those. <laughs> something to indicate something of what's happened to them. Neither of those. So you make your way into the building and, um, uh, you know, say that you're going to speak to the, again, people recognize who you are enough that the, the, the meeting is put together and um, you uh, go and meet with him. So he, of course, is in one of the nicer rooms. That's because of how large the building was and how tall it was. Uh, one of the nicer rooms uh, upstairs. And so um, he meets with you up there and his room itself. Now, this wasn't um, it was partially because of the damage that was done from him like punching into the wall and whatnot but when this one was restructured it was actually restructured once again like kind of small ribs uh uh caging the thing off but this time no stone to um to to cover it up from there actually bits of glass are filling the the areas so he actually has from his like vantage point a good sight out from this corner of the building for like we're gonna say it's about a a 100 and you know 45 degree view um, clean from his from his spot where he can just kind of like stand there and look out and see that region of Craig. So he uh, goes up and you meet him in his room and he's, uh, you know, literally as you guys go, you know, knock and walk in, um, he's putting a book back on the shelf and uh, he turns around and he's like, um, welcome, just two of you. The others uh, went to uh, a tavern. He nods. You know, it is Bastion and Bran. It makes the most sense that the two of them would not... <clears throat> one would want the tavern and the other wouldn't want to be here. So, he nods and says, um, uh, Would you like a drink or a seat? Uh, both would be lovely, actually. He uh, goes very over... Hmm? So that's very generous of you. He goes over and... Steal he, the chair! He'll actually pop a, a, a cork off of a decanter and uh, pours the liquid. It's a clear, like, uh, you know, medium brown liquid. Um, so, you obviously, like, the you can just, looking at it, when you get it and smell it and everything, it's clearly, like, a quality liquor. Um, you know, a type of, like, whiskey or whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So, he, he pours the drink for all three of you. And, um, and so, we'll have, you know, you guys take a seat after you sit, if both of you do. He yeah. sits down as well. And um, uh, says... So, I imagine you come back here to, to do some reporting. Um, somewhat. Partially, but there's also a matter of grave urgency. Um, we have reason to believe that uh, there are some sorcerous ongoings occurring within this town and uh, we intended to investigate it uh, and ensure that no one came to harm. All right. It's not what you're tasked for, but all right. Feel free to elaborate. <laughs> you might remember. You might. You may. The when we last spoke to you, we informed you that we'd killed a uh, source. Witch. Right. Sor yeah, sorcerer. On the top of one of the mountaintops to the, I mean, 
points off in the vague direction. He nods. As he part doesn't of, seem very interested, but he nods. As part of it, we retrieved a couple of eggs that the sorcerer had been working on, which we delivered to some of the citizenry of Craig. Um, we believe that these may have the potential to hatch. Uh, uh, yes, a very dangerous um, magical creature that we uh, are unaware even could exist, let alone does. So you've been contracted by someone else to take care of this problem? It seemed like a good idea to come back. Well, you're free to do your job and handle what you need to handle. But... While we're speaking of contracts, what have you discovered? So far, we've been able to make contact with the Dwarven Scouts, and I've been able to become friends with their scout captain, but they still don't trust us enough to lead us to their camp. Not their main camp. Well, We've camped with them, obviously. You have become friends with the, 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 the captain, the Dwarves, the Scoia'tael. You were human. Yes. Uh, Yes. He's a damn fool if, I, if I've ever known one. <laughs> well, It's almost like my job easy. <laughs> and he like <laughs> raises his glass and takes a drink. Um, there is a complication, though. Um, we, we've been able to make friends with them, but uh, our uh, basculist issue here also happened there, and they've... Um, They've dispersed with, I believe, uh, the person of interest you sent us there for. Tao like Tao like looks at Leonard. Then when he like he's giving away more <laughs> than, then he he like gives him a warning that like. <sighs> so, wait, your phrasing is a little strange to me. Um, mm -hmm. You're saying that Zadal has escaped. Oh. <laughs> uh, Zadal, that's um, uh, that's a blood mage, right? <laughs> he now looks. He sits back in his chair, and he looks uh, uh, a little agitated. As I said, we've not been allowed into the camp or to know the location as of yet. You said you've made friends with their leader. Did you mean Zadal? Scout captain, I said. Scoia'tael's not much more than scouts. All of them. Just a bunch of rats. What is what is the scout captain's name? What is his name? Uh, it's a her. Fine. What is her name? Broca. Broca, then. Fine. You've made friends with Broca, and Broca has informed you of what? Well, <clears throat> we've been asked to run certain errands to gain their trust. However, we have yet to gain their trust fully. He looks to uh, uh, Lenard and says, What are you on about? Are you just trying to make things difficult for me? Hmm. In regards to what? This, these things that you're saying. Do you actually mean them? Or are you being ridiculous? The blood mage. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's actually how this whole bassless thing started. That's um, we actually met the guy who uh, created these beasts that we're hunting now. You're switching back and forth between topics. I'm. He looks too hard to tell and says, is he all right? Well, um, he had quite a fall recently. Uh, one of our horses clobbered him right on the head. Um, he's been a bit out of sorts since, but he's, he's, he was more jumbled a few days ago. He's just sort of struggling to get the right words. He knows what he means to say, but he just, the wrong word comes out sometimes. It well, was very funny. Roll me a deception. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to give you advantage because of how ridiculous he's being. So <laughs> it kind of plays into the story. Oh. 
I like the realization that he was giving a little bit too much information, so he just switches it up to being ridiculous. <laughs> just like, yes. And so he he looks at you and he's like, "I mean, I'm not lying." Mm -hmm. Is the thing. That's why I I've been really careful with what Tao's saying. Is they're not lies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're just half truths. He, lo he he looks at you you're, guys. You're emitting parts that are you know, so less useful. All you've come back is to tell me that you've befriended Abrelka, who is the uh, leader of the, the the scouts, and you're trying to use that to get yourself into the camp to uh, discover more information. That's all you found out so far. And so you didn't come back here to fill me in on that. Instead, you chose to come back here to fulfill a different task while well, having barely well, anything for mine. Would you have wanted us to travel all the way back here with just that to report? He stands up and goes over towards like the openish, like the, the windowed part of the, the walls that were, had been blasted open before. And he looks out over the, uh, the area and says, do you see them down there? And it's kind of like, a, like an invite for you to come over and look. Oh boy. <laughs> see who? Sure. <laughs> let's, let's move over. Uh, do you go over as well, Leonard? Uh, yeah, sure, I'll stand up. So you see who, and you go over and look, and you see, like, there's people about whatever, forever he can see, but obviously some buildings block streets, and so can, it's not like he can see everything, right? It's not, you know, uh, omniscient spot, you know, I know everything. So, um, so he, uh, you look down, and mostly what you can see is the number of witch hunters that are down there just kind of, like, doing their things. A lot of them training, so on and so forth. Do you know how big my company is? Those that are with me. No nope. more than um, yeah. After we had our successes here, I sent word back, and I've had them move in. It's the largest movement of witch hunters that has ever existed. Oh, congratulations. There are 300 of us. 300 of us. That are traveling. This is no small task that we're doing. This is no joking matter. This is no detail that need be wasted. You've been offered a fortune for your for your part in this. You've been offered uh, um, sanctuary. You've been offered amnesty. You've been offered a deal that you will find from no one else. We need to complete this task for you to receive your reward and for things to move forward. So coming here, because you're taking a deal, a contract from someone else to deliver me non-information <laughs> is not something that lets me be that leaves me happy and he says turning around now because you guys had come up to he's like turns around to like regard the two of you much closer than you were before on the opposite sides of the desk does not leave me happy <sighs> does he actually yawn yeah <laughs> <laughs> need i remind you it was you that was most interested in this mm. contract so you think i've come here to just Waste your time? The one who's most interested in the contract? I don't know. Witches can be fickle things. Perhaps you're being faint-hearted. It's, it's a good thing that you bring up the contract, actually. You said you'd uh, find out how much gold that I would be receiving, and also the title that I would be receiving. You said you'd look into both of those for me. Oh, yeah, we haven't gotten that yet, have we? He's, uh, he nods. No, no, no useful information. You want anything else from me? Give me more. Hmm. I really want to just Sparta kick this bitch out the window. <laughs> That'd be Give free. me more. You, you want more? You, you want more? Sparta! <laughs> I mean, if you rolled and won initiative, and you like, if everything went in your in your favor, you theoretically could do that. <laughs> And then fight three hundred witch hunters. Cause, but, mm -hmm. but, I mean, because like the glass. It'd be is like enough. it'd be like reverse three hundred with me and Leonard in the way through. The the, 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 the you glass know, is. You guys is can fight the three hundred witch hunters. I will twin cast invisibility on Bastion and we can fuck off. I'll just tell everybody that they fell. Like I'll just convince everybody that he yeah, goes so well. I guarantee you. <laughs> he just flies out like ah, oh, you bastard! Oh, he <laughs> fell. Yeah, he, he slipped. Yeah, it was nasty. It was nasty. Do you see how drunk he was before he died? <laughs> so, oh, right. on a job like that. Um, uh, well, 
if you don't intend to give us any useful information, uh, we'll leave you with what useful information we've given you, shall we? Yeah, I think a good fucking off is in order right now. Mm, he, he nods at that one. Very well. He's pretty pissed that you just wasted his time with nothing. And so um, <laughs> you guys uh, go walk out the door. And uh, Tal, Tal, uh, Tal puts down the glass on something, but like on the edge of it, so it drops off. Uh, and smashes, and it goes, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it drops off, smashes, uh, oh, sorry. And he uh, he watches after you two as, you, um, as you're going out. He's, you can see, like, the look in his, in his eye when he saw you was a bit surprised, but a bit excited. Then he got bored. Then he got annoyed. And now, you know, then he got, like, angry as the two of you continue playing. And now you can actually see, like, he's a man that got into the position he did because of, like, yeah, that was the bad. degree of evil that he has in his heart. And the look that he gives you kind of gives you that impression that that evil can very quickly rise to the surface. Whoa. And you don't have to be an other creature for him to hate you. So he, like, the way he watches after you, you guys know, like, clearly know you're kind of pushing him to his limits of where he's willing to um, to let actions go unpunished. He's used to soldiers that command orders, that uh, obey orders. So he lets you leave, doesn't say anything, no calls out nothing, but you know you're kind of at that brink. Um, meanwhile, uh, flashing you back your over... your pants of shit on his doorstep while you're at it? Jesus. Wish I, I thought I hated the guy. You guys go walking down trying to find out where the other person's uh, uh, home is. It doesn't take you long. You know, you eventually find out, okay, well, that's where that guy lives. And, okay, this is where this place is. Okay, cool. You said you could see it from there. Yay, we found it. And so uh, you, you go up and, you know, unlock the door. And, uh, is there a big smoking crater where Lord Tavison's residence used to be? No. Good. I give back. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> no. Um, I, a lot of, like, even though there's a lot of destruction that happened beforehand, it was all in like literally one path of the city that stopped and what well, didn't come through here. So um, uh, you um, uh, go and unlock the door. Um, I imagine, and I'm just kind of putting these words in your mouth, you would have done detect magic even just as you walked up to his house. So you didn't detect anything, you know what I mean? But literally as you put the key in the lock and turn it, and the, 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 like literally like as you turn the lock, you can almost see like the effects of magic falling off of the door like you can just almost see like uh like sparks you know from uh you know a hammer and an anvil uh coming off could kind of like fall off the door so whatever was there beforehand is immediately uh removed um you won't be able to discover what what it was you know without having studied it while it was up so anyways you turn the lock that falls off you guys open the door and you walk in so uh the building itself he actually has the entirety of the building uh the building is not small by any uh stretch like it's um uh you know, the, the size, like the breadth and the width of it is like a solid, um, uh, what is it, like 16 feet wide, but about like 23 feet deep for the uh, for the house, which is like a decent size um, uh, house. Um, it actually goes up uh, three floors as well. So a lot of the uh, buildings in Craig, um, because of the fact that everything's built on very solid materials, um, they're actually easily able to build up to third floor. That's not uncommon. Like I said, it's a densely populated, uh, smaller place. So there's several buildings here that go to three instead of just two. This is one of them. It actually goes all the way up to three floors. As you guys go in and make your way about it, you can see like it's it's nicely furnished, but not like we're not talking like super lavish. Shape. It's just like his other home. Um, it's simple, but it's it, it's furnished completely throughout. Every room has all of its furniture in it. There's like pictures or paintings, my apologies, on walls, mirrors here and there. He ha does have like uh, uh, books set up in, in some places. Um, he does have, uh, you know, various equipment in other rooms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, nothing that really jumps out at you beyond, of course, his study inside here. Uh, when you go to his study, that's where he has all of his magical equipment and uh, most importantly, he actually has set up uh, over near uh, the window, but like moved away from it. So it's not directly in front of the, the window that's up here. Um, uh, a megascope is set up right there. With a quick inspection, you can see that he actually has the crystals from the megascope. The, the two primary ones are not 
in the megascope itself they're actually put on a shelf nearby to stop someone else from being able to just kind of like use this as like an anchor to teleport in you know what i mean so they're like set on the uh, a shelf nearby so I take um, note of that while uh, inspecting his study so you, you do go about and you see those things uh an important thing to note about the, the megascope is you don't know his full background or how he was schooled, but the use of a megascope is not something that's very, is widely known to those that are capable of using magic. That's, um, you know. So, but then you go about a study and you see like all of his things are, are there. O overall, what you notice is it's just a, a nice home. It's large. There are many rooms. Uh, the room is clearly his bedroom. He has clearly guest rooms, you know, so it, it actually would be a very comfortable spot. It's value. You have no idea. None of you guys are real estate, real estate agents in this region. Free real estate. Huh. Besides, there's not like there's real estate agents anyways that really exist. It's, it's you know, you make a deal with a person buying or selling, you know? Yeah. So right. You have no idea. Is there any, uh, just like based on stuff that he left around in here, is there any sign that he would, like, I trust him, but is there any sign of him having any misdeeds? I would look for this because I, while I do trust him, I still want to be wary of who we work with. Roll me an investigation check. Uh, whoever wants to roll it, roll it with advantage because the other one's assisting. And then roll me an Arcana check, whoever wants to roll it, uh, because otherwise it's just both advantage. Both you guys are good at those things. Um, I've got three in investigation. I'll probably... Uh, yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> I think I would be the person to do the Arcana check. It does make more sense, yeah. You so, can roll both. Oh. If you're better oh. at both, you can roll both, because you're both doing everything. Yeah, go ahead okay, and roll got... both. Okay, so uh, both advantage, you said? Or... Yeah. Cool. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so, looking about and trying to find anything of uh, that, like, almost be condemning of him, you don't find anything that you think would be condemning. What you do find out is that um, over in his study, he does have a whole bunch of books uh, about things like, <clears throat> about things like, uh, uh, like in one area of the various different types of like reptiles that are indigenous to the area details about them and we're talking like legit you know old school medical journals like where they have like the images and so they have like sketches of things that have been like flayed open like arrows pointing to and like like a little notation then underneath it like where it indexed to and all those kind of details so like stuff like that as well as you know a, a book that pertains to, to different types of drachnids it was kind of light on drachnids in general uh, near like the earlier portion, but then in the back half of the book really expanded on things like basilisks. And you can see that stuff over with different types of tools and whatnot, and even like little diagrams. And so like the, the plan that he originally come up with that made the eggs and da da da, it's kind of like all of his research material for that is all right here. That's kind of like the most uh, standout thing there. Uh, what you discover there, um, um, uh, Rick, is um, when you have like a particular... Uh, mage they tend to keep their own journals like they'll keep things that are written from others like printings of things that are writ written by others that they're like kind of learning from but they usually keep all of their own notes all of their own stuff um you notice all that but one of the things you also do notice is that there's clearly a couple of books that are here as well that are not his it's a small handful of books that are specifically go to um uh it's a combination of uh, i can't remember the name of the school or college so it's like a geomancy which is what he had mentioned beforehand but also with that the books that go to i'm going to google it really quickly um which are magics uh is a specific school for summoning oops where did i type that i don't know where i type that there you go so it's like witcher magics is a um uh, a type of school that exists in this universe um and so it's that type of magic that you kind of like see uh, books for um and that kind of like stands out for you uh this is your arcana check stands out for you and you kind of put two and two together that this is probably what belongs to the person that he was working in unison with beforehand <clears throat> still trying to get to that it's just loading very slowly uh nothing that, nothing other than that stands out for you guys was there anything else you're kind of looking for uh oh, it's really? uh uh Goshia. Goshia is what it's called uh, G O E T I A. It's summoning creatures. So I'm sorry, you said yeah, not really. I'm not, I'm not looking at anything. Okay. I would be more interested in his studies, and so like, Brand found what he's looking for. Now you know you're not supposed to really go pouring through his stuff. Yeah, obviously checking titles and being interested. You don't think that would be an offense to him, but pouring through his studies, that's like, that's like you know hanging out and like trying on somebody's underwear. You know what I mean? Like that's fucking weird. 
You know, does it technically harm anything? No, unless you leave crabs, but it's it's weird. I would but I'm invading his privacy though. as well. If there's yeah. underwear there, I'm gonna wear it. On your head. So you guys um, wait, finished... Bastion wears underwear? I thought he has his <laughs> off most of the time. You guys finish going about searching yeah. through that location. Uh what do you do from there? Just kinda like wait to meet up with the others or Uh I don't know <clears throat> if we necessarily had a plan of action. Like we didn't really talk to them about where we should meet up or anything, so Sure. Okay. Yeah, this this Bram boy just sort of pieced out. Yeah, I mean, but you guys know who had the key, and you guys know like what your plans were, and so on and so forth. So, so more or less, a little bit of time passes, and eventually the um, uh, the other two. Brown would go left. reading some of the books of his companion. Um, and, and you guys would um, uh, eventually time passes, and the other two who had left um, where Stefan was know like, okay, where are those two? We got to meet up with them. We got to figure this out. So that was both fun and annoying. Do the two of you have exchange words, uh, Tal and Lenard, or did you kind of just somewhat understand what just transpired between each other? Like a look? We've exchanged some words. Yeah, we, there's been some discussion. Okay. Um, just to put you in on the loop, we've been messaging on Discord right now. There's there's some private discussion. Okay, cool. So oh, you, I can... No, no, you're fine. So you guys uh, have a little bit of a private discussion between the two of you, something that I suppose will come out on camera for the rest of us later on. I actually love off-camera things. Things like that are fun. Um, so, uh, but you guys realize where it is that the other two probably are. Um, did you want to head there directly, or did you have anything else that you needed to that was important? Um. <laughs> um I think think we'll probably head there directly for now mm -hmm. okay yeah we're not yeah and so you guys do that you guys head there and eventually are able to find the location and eventually there's a knock on the door and bastion like makes his way down <laughs> oh is there hello and welcome to my house you know like it's kind of like it felt like a funny <laughs> moment you know? did you bring any ladies uh you guys ready go down to the lord's house Rand's in, like, um, Malvoon's study. So, uh, I'm thinking, from the looks of it, either they're trapped in there, or they haven't hatched yet. If they haven't hatched yet, it might be worth us talking to Lord Teveston, not explaining the situation properly, just discussing with him, and Leonard sneaks in and cracks both the eggs. Honestly... I don't think I would normally agree with this, but I feel like Lord Taviston does kind of potentially value money and fame over the lives of people here, so that might honestly be for the best. He's also an acquaintance of Malveen, which makes him less trustworthy. Mm. Should we still try to capture one or take one of the eggs back to Malveen? He did mention a reward. <laughs> you think? Are you having this discussion like with Bran there? Because like Bran's off reading the journal in. The oh, study. I imagine we would have got. You. Yeah, you guys oh, probably okay. would have gone upstairs. You're inside that room, and you know, or at least in, I... in that case, he would have reluctantly put the book away. And then, <laughs> like, well, if we could, like, in, I don't know, it's going to be hard to try and convince him, you know. We got him those eggs because they were a one-of-a-kind trophy. It's going to be hard to let them go without a struggle, mm. albeit one of words or one of uh, restraint. Mm. Let's Likely talk about money or something out of it. Let's talk about Malvoon real quickly. When, uh, if we do end up getting these eggs, um, just just a quick thought I had on the on the road over here. Um, wh why is Malvoon giving us a contract? To go to a city he supposedly cares about, um, and, and, and I'm using this term just for the hypothetical here, um, to have us capture creatures that could wipe out the town in exchange for his only anchor to the town and his only tie to the people here. It's almost like maybe he doesn't really give a shit about the town and just wants those eggs. I certainly don't trust the bastard, if that's what you mean. I mean, let's I, not forget he did help create them. 
That is fair. But if he does hold true to his promise, and so far he has, uh, having gear that utilizes, or some sort of item that utilizes the magic of these creatures would be extremely useful. Or extremely deadly in the wrong hands. We may have the cream of the crop, but there's no saying that he couldn't reproduce the effects or give something only slightly less dangerous to someone else. I've that been is reading true, but... a little bit of the uh, Geomancer's notes, the person that we encountered on the mountain. Mm hmm. What do you found? Interesting stuff, although. Just skimming his journal and his learnings is not really enough to give me great insight. You can understand that Malvoon probably won't appreciate, but, well, <laughs> I couldn't resist the opportunity to study more, you know? I but think... No, I don't trust Malvoon either, although, granted, whatever mm -hmm. that person might be able to craft for us would be quite a boon. Mm. And we already have the eye. I think realistically we can't trust Malvoon if we were to give him one of these creatures and so we ought to kill them both do you not at least agree that if we were able to capture such a beast we would be able to have a source of saliva to help create an antidote for the future that is something to consider as well if we killed all of them we wouldn't be needing an antidote you but say that, but it still... might work on other creatures that turn people to stone as well. Beyond that, we still need to... We don't know that the saliva we have will be enough to help all of the people back at the camp. Yeah, plus, we don't have that saliva anymore, nor do we have the eye. Uh, the eye I was explicitly eye. taken back. By oh, it was? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would saliva. not leave the eye in Malvoon's hands. Right. What if we, since we already have one eye, what if we destroy the eyes of the creatures before we give it to him so that he can't utilize the stone power? The only thing that he'd be able to work with then would be the saliva and other things. But he might be able to reproduce the essence the of the creature and channel it into something that if you were to look at it, it would turn people to stone anyway. It is a danger. We don't know precisely how it works. There's a reason that he was working with someone else and a reason that he's so desperate to get hold of one of these creatures because he doesn't know how to create them. If he did, he probably wouldn't care. But he's willing to go to such great lengths because, yes, Zadal was his friend. Perhaps he felt guilty about that. But this one, he, he clearly desperately wants these creatures alive. In fact, he wants one alive so badly he's willing to part with quite a fancy estate, to be honest. The estate is just for taking care of the monsters where they to hatch. No, bringing it's if we, if, if we bring one alive back. would grant us a great Oh, yeah, the you might be right, actually. Yeah. If we take care of the problem one way or another, we're guaranteed that estate. However, given the uh, neighbors that we saw en route here, as much as this is a comfortable house with a nice study and a megascope as well, which I guess I'll have to ask him about that. Bearing I don't in mind... particularly like this town, and it doesn't like me either. Yeah, well, that's because you summoned a great hairy monster into the middle of it. Um, but bearing in mind the uh, population that you dislike so much, you have, in effect, diplomatic immunity from. For now, Spe if the word of witch hunters is to be trusted. Mm. I trust them about as far as I can throw them, honestly. Have you gained any word from Stefan? <laughs> there were some choice words I, I think, think that we may have gained. I don't think we got off on the right foot there. 
Ah, I see you're starting oh. to see things from my perspective then. I was not expecting that of you. Of me? Well. What did you tell him exactly? We tried to keep things vague. I think he uh, told us to fuck off. I believe he agreed with your uh, sentiment, yes. But what did you tell him exactly about the score you tell? That we'd Nothing. met with some of their scouts. Yeah. Not much. Working on gaining their trust. He was noticeably displeased with the information. Ah, lack of progress in his eyes. Well, yes, lack of progress in my eyes too. If we were that slow, I'd, um, well. Did you get any of his blood yet? by chance? Hmm? Did you what? get any of his blood? Yeah, there wasn't really the opportunity for that. So you decided instead of waiting and trying to like figure out a strategy, just go visit him right away and piss him off immediately. Yeah, yeah well, you know. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not saying I would have joined you for it, but it would have made sense to have a plan beforehand. Yes, your plans are always very fantastic, Brent. Do you remember that time when we jumped off a cliff? Yeah, you landed perfectly, didn't you? Well, when did you guys jump off a cliff? Oh, oh right. you see, um, we ambushed some scouts where we learned about the, uh, the half dwarf child. We jumped off an 1100 foot cliff. It was quite a journey, quite exhilarating. But <clears throat> we digress. I believe we are in agreement that we kill these creatures. And we do so without the knowledge of Lord Taviston. If that is what all of you think, I will trust your judgments. <laughs> I think it might be safer, even if I were to... Well, I don't think it will surprise you that I would be very interested to see what that friend of his would come up with. So you guys, with your agreement to go... But Leonard gives me enough shit about the eye as it is. He would get his knickers in a twist if we were to bring him in alive. He's oh yeah, it's my it. problem that you wanted to enslave the world, okay. Bernard, when you do this, see if you can get some sort of substance out of it. Maybe it'll have saliva in it. That way we have at least a little bit more to work with. I mean, they won't exactly be grown, but maybe you can get something. He has a blood fetish, if you can get some of that while squishing it. You, you make your way, kind of all in agreement and whatnot, a bit more bickering and the like, uh, here and there. You you make your way out of the house and um, onto the street, heading over to a Lord Taviston's uh, home. You know, a bit of nerves or whatever, but I imagine you're all making the front door approach. Um, or at least, uh, yeah, you're all making the front door approach, that's right, um, uh, to knock on the door. And with that, why don't we take our next break? We'll be back in just a couple of minutes to see exactly where this goes. I really have to not our, so. not our final break, though. No. Not our final break. Whoa. We got more break after this one. Whoa. I have to pee so bad. So I'll see y'all shortly. All right, bye. Let's look at some food. Yeah. <laughs>